Uh, we've got Wendy Mejia on with us from, she's the Director of Operations at Life Law. Uh, it's a firm in Southern California, I believe, Wendy. Um, so yeah, Wendy has been on our beta for AI fields for just about a week now, uh, has had some really good usage through it. Uh, and so we just want to kind of ask her some questions, have her tell us about her, her experience um, and, and how it impacts the practice. Um, so Wendy, if you don't mind kind of just giving us a, a kind of an overview of how you've started using it and what you've seen so far, we'd, we'd love that. So our first interest, we are a personal injury plaintiff firm in Los Angeles. So I wanted to start somewhere where it's like our main practice it, in our main practice, medical records, everything case value, you know, how successful your case is going to be is everything relating to medical records. So we started with those medical record fields in the um, webinar you've seen, they went through a lot of different fields, but we really focus on the medical records. And we also focus on the TCR fields. We're like, okay, let's test this out. This is something we know really well. Um, and we have actually, actually within our build, we have fields where our case managers are reviewing medical records and they're literally copying and pasting, you know, treatment summaries, they're pasting, you know, recommendations, uh, medications, they're pasting it into our med med medical records section. And I was like, okay, great. So we have a section where the human element is being added. And now let's, it's going to be really easy to test out the AI version. I'm like, how, how does it compare? You know, how does it compare with the accuracy? How does it compare with like the amount of speed that it takes to review these? And it's, it was great. One of the examples that I had given Alex is one of our case managers put in a date of service on a medical record of, you know, date of service was 82322. But when we ran the AI, the um, the prompt, the section gave us data service was actually A24. And I'm like, okay, you know, where's the error? And I actually went back to the medical records and the medical records accurately stated data service was A24. So the human aspect made an error. So our, you know, one of our staff made an error, put the wrong date of uh, service in our section where we warehouse the dates of service. So it's nice to see like, oh, wow, it caught that error where you have a lot of the human element. We all make mistakes. We're not, we're all human. It's going to happen, right? But like, you know, mistakes of like the wrong date of loss one day off means malpractice in our fields. So, you know, having those safety nets and making sure that everything is accurate was awesome. Uh, one of the other surprising tests that we ran was on the TCR. So I actually, we have a case where it was a TCR, five vehicle collision, you know, very complex uh, uh, traffic report, just because the amount of vehicles, I think that case alone had about seven to 10 claimants, 10 claimants, about 10 claimants. So I was able to identify like the parties, like the vehicles that they were riding on, it was like they were able to identify the passengers per vehicle, it's, it's amazing. You know, you can see it in the police report and you can extract it manually, but if you're uploading within a minute and you have a full TCR summary of all the vehicles, especially when you have such a complex case, is it's gold. You're saving time. Everything that we say, time is money. So if you're saving time, you know, your case managers have time to do something else, focus on, you know, medical treatment, making sure that the client is happy with the firm. So, it's been very uh, eye-opening in regards to what the future is going to bring us. Yeah, thank you for that, Wendy. I, I really do appreciate it. Was the um, the the data service that we found the issue with was that in the the, the huge batch of medical records, or was that one of the smaller ones you had started? That was with? one of the smaller cases. Right. Um, I think that one only had about a few dates of service, but you know, if it finds it with the little one. I wouldn't be surprised in the larger ones. I did go, we do have one big case that, was, that we used as an example, and this is a, a big motorcycle case, you know, worth a high value case. And we ran a lot of these um, prompts. We did, we were like, let's extract it. The amount of like data that it's giving us from pain, pain thresholds from like, you know, the first data service, you were, if the client was at a 10, you know, for, a long period of time, 10, 10, 10. And then you can see, okay, well, after all this medical treatment, you know, the pain levels start to decrease, they're getting better. And it kind of starts showing you patterns, what you're looking for. For our smaller case that we ran, one of the big things that was really important to us was 
It identifies the pain levels, the identification of the pain scores. And it kind of gives you an idea. If once the client is getting to a zero or a one or a zero, then that's when you kind of start reviewing the case. It's like, okay, was the client ready to be discharged? And, you know, let's start gathering all the medical records and billing to make sure that it's complete before the client is discharged from all the providers, which then you're already caught cutting the time that it's going to spend in your pre-litigation department before you send out that demand. So as we know, cases don't incur interest, right? So if we're sending clients that treating in a week and we're able to send out a demand letter within seven days, all the future recommendations that were added will be considered by these carriers versus sending a demand letter 30, 45, 60 days after the client has done medical treatment and then sending a demand saying like, oh, our client has this recommendation for future treatment and it's not going to be considered because it's been 60 days and they haven't gotten the treatment. So why would we consider that? So then it goes hand in hand with the case value where you're holding that case value. Thank you so much. I think one of the exciting things for me is like, if it was one of your smaller cases where it caught that error, going back to the actual error, it's not, um, you know, it's not that the person missed a needle in a stack of, in a haystack, a, a ton of records. It was like, you know, a couple hundred pages at most that they made an error. They were, you know, that we went back in and were able to correct. Um, so it, it's it's not just the these cases where it's an enormous record set where this is useful. It's any time that you're doing data analysis uh, that you can use this to spot check, to improve, and to make sure that you are are catching things.